are showing interest in this video, we're going to talk about why our orchids, when they bloom, that the new blooms actually do not look pristine, that their longevity is reduced. So if you're just curious and want to inform yourself what could be the factor if this should ever happen to you, I appreciate that you're here. And I also appreciate the fact that you trust me with the information if you've been having similar issues with some of your orchids that come into bloom and you're expecting them to be around for the next two or three weeks, depending. But within the first three or four days of the bloom's opening, they start to look old and aged. Thank you very much for being here. So what you're looking at is my Catlianthe little fairy. And a little bit of history is important in order to ascertain what is going wrong with the blooming of your orchid. So first of all, I would say know your orchid and know what her history is. Easier said than done. If your orchid has just arrived and it's the first time she's blooming with you, but that is one point to take into consideration. If she blooms for you for the first time, that is definitely a factor as to why the blooms will look tired and weak very, very quickly. She is not ready to bloom out. This was her practice go around. But if you've had an orchid for a while now, and my little fairy has been with me for several years, and this happened now two years in a row that I couldn't enjoy the beautiful fragrance and the longevity of these blooms, I would like to bring to your attention the fact that I messed up the root system. I left her in Lekka and self-watering far too long. I didn't flush her enough and her root system collapsed. And Madam here is a bifoliate. So she had to develop a whole new root system. This growth right here was one of the tallest that I grew when she came into my collection. And then in the back here, you can see that the subsequent growths were much smaller. That was developing a new root system. And this one that's blooming this year is developing because she doesn't get enough fertilizer. I didn't want to risk her collapsing on the root system all over again. Which brings me to my next point is not enough fertilizer. The first blooming that I had with her after the root stress did exactly the same thing as what she's doing now and opened up very slowly, like struggling, not really wanting to open up. And then within three days, she starts to look aged, old and tired. Fully understandable if the new root system had to be developed that the next blooming might not be up to par. So the second year now, I've got the same thing going on. My growth is the same height as the one after she developed a new root system. But this year, I didn't give her enough fertilizer. Keep that in mind that if your orchid is struggling, that's part of getting to know your orchid. The fact that she might need a lot more fertilizer in order to do what she needs to do when she blooms out for you. Now you can see how beautiful, proud the spike is. The energy is there for the spike to come out. So fertilizing was enough to produce a fabulous, strong, upright spike without any support, but not enough to support the amount of blooms this orchid blooms out. Usually nine, 10, I've had a season with 11. That is a lot of energy. Another thing is environmental conditions. If your orchid blooms in winter, a little bit of cold damage, a draft, or something that comes into the room, be it pollutants from a heater, too dry air, not enough humidity. All these environmental conditions will also affect the longevity and the pristine look of your blooms. Now, you may also say, well, I've got another one blooming right next to her, same time coming into bud, etc., and she is not affected and everything is fine, gets the same treatment. My answer to that is, that is the beauty of orchids. They each, in their own right, have a different personality. And if something isn't quite right for one orchid, she will respond with blooms that fade very, very quickly. And if it's the same condition for the other orchid, she may respond and say, no, I'm having a great time. This is how you discover which orchid requires what in your collection. And it is the definition of getting to know your orchid. So with every point that I've just mentioned, know that you do the opposite and try something again for the next season. So in my particular case, when it comes to my Catlianthe little fairy, I have babied her enough for two years. This year in 2022, I'm going full on fertilizer the way I am accustomed to especially when it comes to a bifoliate because they need a lot of energy. So 2022, change of plans. We've got ourselves a root system in the pot and we are going full in and taking the fertilizer level back up to 300 parts per million when she grows her new growth. Know that as well, if you put your blooms in direct sun, even if it is in winter, it could be that the sun is a little bit too strong for the petals and sepals to hold up. 
And for that reason, they can look a little bit fried at the ends, as you can see with mine, which did not happen to my blooms as such, but that is what it will look like if there's too much sun. So yes, the winter sun is much, much weaker, but not behind a window, or if the grow room is being artificially heated. Artificial lights will do exactly the same thing. Get them too close to the light, and they will start to look like this as well. If all the factors I've just mentioned are A-OK, -okay, then your orchid has underlying issues. It might be a virus that you cannot see. It might also be a fungus that you cannot see. Even though the orchid is capable of living with these two pests kind of deal, for lack of a better description, when it comes to blooming, that is when you're going to see the abnormality and something is not quite right. When I cleaned this orchid up two years ago, I did not see a purple ring in her rhizome. But that doesn't mean that the fungus isn't there. Knowing the history of this orchid, it is possible in the shipment that she came with, the one orchid that did have fusarium has also affected this orchid. It will be this season with the new growth where we can ascertain whether that is the truth or not. See how well she grows when I put her through her regiment treatment with the correct fertilizer levels, etc. And then we draw our conclusions in 2023 when she blooms again, keeping all fingers crossed that I don't break off her spike. So is there any difference between bud blast and blooms not blooming out properly? Several factors can be different, but not all. It's just that when you have your buds blooming out and then you see your blooms kind of collapse and fade way too fast, you also need to consider what is going on and then remember that for the next go around, change something around so that this isn't happening again in the following blooming. Luckily, some of us are gonna go into the spring season and this is not a problem and we're very happy to have a new growth coming and then look forward to the next bloom around. I fully understand the disappointment when it comes to seeing buds and then they bloom out and then they start to collapse so soon. I have been through this so many, many years now that I'm actually already thinking of the challenge of the next 12 months. So personally, I'm not disappointed. I'm actually quite excited to see what the next 12 months bring. So if you are disappointed when this happens in your collection, turn that disappointment around, make it a challenge and look forward to your analysis being productive throughout the growing season and then enjoy the anticipation of the next blooming and see what happens then. Now, I didn't take any notes for this video. I saw the problem and I thought, right, you're coming out before any more of your blooms drop. We're just gonna talk about it and do everything ad lib. So, if I've missed out on any kind of point that you observe in your collection as well, when an orchid of yours has come into bloom and then you had the blooms collapse prematurely, excluding self-pollination, <laughs> let me know in the comments below. One thing is what nature does because nature does that and that is what the orchid does. Another thing is seeing what you're seeing in the viewfinder and wondering why it's happened. So self-pollination, because that is the characteristic of the orchid, is not included in what you're seeing here because this is not normal. Self-pollination can be. Anyway, add to the list in the comments. I would appreciate that very much. I hope at least that some of what I've just said explains something you may have seen in your collection. And if you haven't seen it in your collection, that at least you're armed and ready and you know what to be aware of for the next go around if your blooms collapse a little bit prematurely as they normally should. Appreciate your time. Have yourselves a beautiful day. On one condition, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.